We hope everyone is doing great. We know we are because Big Me just updated the ink note color and the Goody Reader X Big Me Galley. Today we're going to go over the ink note color and as you can see on the right, this is the change log. I'm not going to read out every single thing to you guys. You can check it out yourselves, but I will say we are going to save the chat GPT till the very end because it is the most interesting and craziest thing we've seen on an e-paper device before. So let's get started. The first thing is the UI. It's been completely redone. It has gone from a very squared looking kind of old school appeal to it that Big Me's been using for many moons over to a more rounded and bubbly version. So on the side here, you do get all of these things that slide up and down. That's really cool. They can be changed as well. You can change all those. You can add things to group. And when you swipe the top down, it's just very circular now and very prominently focused and presented is the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi with a side-to-side -side width justified toggles of on and off respectively. You get split screen, you get the e-ink center. Let's check that out because the ink center is the one we definitely want to check out the most. Pretty much all the exact same thing except we do have HD256 which also isn't its own speed mode in and of itself but what it does is adds IMG256 or grayscale 256 or image enhancement throughout the entire device and you've seen us mention that many times before. Next on the list, better display quality, very few ghosting, and faster refresh is what they are saying. So what we're going to do is go to the e-ink center, and we're going to keep this on normal. And normal is fair because it's right down the middle between the absolute max and the absolute bottom. So what we're going to do is just do a few things. We're going to go into settings. We're going to look at some scrolling elements. We're going to go back and just do a few things here. So I'm going to head over to Google Play. Let's move some carousels around, see what it looks like like see how things kind of fuzz and fizz and refresh so I must say there's less ghosting I don't see any ghosting in the background but it's still it's still fairly choppy depending on where you are on your device and it does handle gesture support perfectly fine let's go over to the Kindle app open a book really quick because we all need to see that there is some ghosting there you'll see right there dismiss that Let's open up a book here. So we do have some ghosting on the screen when you're dealing with things like the cover art and very complex images, but for the most part, it has been smoothed over a little bit. It has definitely been smoothed over. It does kick back to HD mode when you go into new apps and stuff like that. So I am seeing less ghosting on black and white elements. When you do add some color elements, you do still get that remnants of ghosting, but e-ink always ghosts. So it's not like any one manufacturer can ever get rid of that because it's just inherently part of the technology. It's never going to go away. So I would say that in the normal usage of things, just going up and down like that, I have went back from the Amazon app. I don't see any leftover text or anything like that. It is exactly as advertised. 30% lower power consumption. This is not something we can show you guys. We have heard your concerns, everyone. You guys always say, talk about battery life. Well, the thing is, everyone, is that we can't really talk about battery life. Reason being, the Amazon says it'll last months, but we have reports of people losing 75% in a week. 14% in a day. So it doesn't last months, now does it? It is all going to come down to how you use it as an actual human being. We have devices that are sitting over there off camera in our studio that have lasted half a year on standby with no Wi-Fi because e-ink and e-paper doesn't use any battery. But things like this, no, it's not gonna last months. Absolutely not. But the beauty is you don't have to charge it every day and them refining the battery and tweaking things to the battery and adding things like performance mode, power save mode, super power save mode, these are all things that are going to save you in the end. More functions on notes. Well, while the prompt is here, we might as well just follow along with what it says. So the top bar has your basic menu bar. You can rename things on the top. You can choose between a bunch of different pens. You can preset the pens. You get a side toolbar right there. You'll see, as it is saying, you have an export to various different things, which we'll show you, and you can access next page and previous page. This is just some stuff we wrote a little bit before. Let's go to a new page here, and you will see that we have our sidebar. 
We do have a band slide. They call it band slide. A lot of manufacturers do. iReader does as well. They basically mean they ban the capacitive nature of it, not sliding of any kind. It's just a naming thing. We also have our customizable pens up top. You can customize each individual element of each one. It is very nice that they give you a bunch of different colors, 16 colors in total. You have your eraser. You have your toolbar, which you can toggle on and off. It's kind of like the floating ball, which they also have, but for a side toolbar, which is, I think, a very nice touch you get undo and redo so this has been reworked as well and if you check out the videos up above you will see the note-taking experience on big me as we have done many a time before but i will say well job well done everyone pencil no still doesn't do tilt so don't be expecting that anytime soon i will say the writing experience just while we're here on a big me ink note is adequate it's not the best by far, but it's a little bit above, say, an Onyx or a Mi Book. It's a little bit more crunchy. It's got some resistance to it, but it's not quite up into the upper echelons of like a Fujitsu, a Remarkable One, a Mimas, or even the recent offerings like an iReader Smart 4, So, which we are incidentally using the iReader pen. Oh no, this is a Lenovo pen. They all look the same, these pens, but that's a good point because Wacom will always work on this unit despite whatever technology you're using. If you want to use the Lamy, if you want to use the Mitsubishi, you can do that on this unit no problem. New user guide app. This is very nice because a lot of people don't know that we host all of the Big Me user guides as well as every one of the 30 plus manufacturers we deal with. But it's nice to have a dedicated app because on this unit, you can now click on the user guide app and know exactly how to use it. Notes. How do you do notes? How do you do reading? How do you do library, etc.? It's going to have all of this information and the amount of pages will be corresponding to the little rounded ovular circles at the bottom that you can go like that. How do you use global handwriting? This has been a question that we covered many a time. You can now do it all from the comfort of the unit itself. This is a very good touch that not a lot of manufacturers actually do. A lot of manufacturers add things like regulatory information and stuff like that, but no one ever needs that. People need user guides. It is very rare to see this next one added handwriting input for emails. We don't see that with anyone as a stock app. We see that in third party apps, but typically the thing about Wacom is that it doesn't really work that great with third party things because you don't ever have anyone except Onyx with OneNote who can use any sort of handwriting with the actual EMR electromagnetic resonance communication and properly handwrite, but they did it right here. You can write your things out, you can write between the lines, you can write all over the place, it doesn't matter. You can say, hey there, I signed the page, sign on the X, etc. And then send it right away. There's no, there's nothing else you need to do. So you can go over here to the key input, click on the middle, the keyboard pops up, or you can go over to the handwriting input and continue on your handwriting journey. You don't get a lot of selection as to what kind of pen, but that's not the point. If someone sends you something that you need to sign in your email, you just simply go to your email app sign it at the bottom of the page, click send, and you didn't have to print, scan, or copy anything. It's quite nice. ChatGPT is the latest in both efficiency and keeps you up all night nightmare levels of AI technology. Reason being because it basically can be a human to a very close degree little bit lacking in sarcasm and all that but for the most part it's pretty amazing so for example you would open up the chat gpt app that they have on here click down here and just start talking into it write me a story once you click this little go button it's in a second going to write a gigantic massive story with paragraphs punctuation I, I can't even think that quick and like just please stop writing this story actually Lily was hesitant at first but like with trembling hands this is this is nuts so basically it's the first time an e-paper device stock right out of the gates has this technology in it obviously chat GPT as you guys know is an AI engine that can basically change your entire life and adds levels of productivity solutions via artificial intelligence just wrote this gigantic story I can now 
send this and finish my book report and I don't have to stay up all night. I can now eat popcorn and watch Netflix. Over here as well, you can do composition. So I can say it could be anything great beyond. And then I will say outline and then click submit. And once I do, it's going to just rattle off this stuff that a human brain can't even come close to matching the level of efficiency here. So this is a great addition and it can give you different things like you can write stuff, you can ask it questions. There's a lot of potential with ChatGPT and it is now located directly on the device right there.